if everybody could mute their mics. And then also if people turn off their video, it'll help with the bandwidth on the presentation and you'll see it in better clarity. So everybody off with their videos and mute. Okay, um, just so everybody knows, this will be recorded, so it will be part of the CMC University programming, so it will be available after the presentation for everybody to look at again. Um, during the presentation, if everybody can hold back their questions and just chat them in, add chats to everyone if you'd like. Um, what we'll try to do is at the end of the presentation, go through the questions that um, are most relevant. Um, we have about an hour planned, so it's gonna be pretty tight, but if you could just chat your questions, that'd be best. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, welcome, this is the CMC presentation on the Colorado Trail Explorer. Um, my name is uh, Randy Blosser, and I'm a uh, CMC trail, um, uh, leader, trip leader, and um, I'm also on the BTX uh, committee. So I've done a lot of hiking and stuff in Colorado over the years, back my whole life. <laughs> and I've used a lot of different mapping programs and um, GPS apps and that. And last summer, I decided to try Colorado Trail Explorer. It's a free application, which I like. And most importantly, I liked the fact that the maps were very high quality, very similar to National Geographic maps that you get as a premium deal with other GPS applications. But what was really great last summer was the fact that Colorado Trail Explorer, you get up-to-date trail conditions on the maps. And that was so important last summer during the fires. Um, it really saved my, my butt and kept me out of trouble a lot of times. So that's why I thought it was a really great program. And I basically convinced the backpacking group to this year put all of our routes for our pre planned trips into Cotrex. So anybody that's signing up for BPX trips this year, you'll be able to find the routes in Cotrex Colorado Trail Explorer. Okay. So doing that thought was probably a good idea if we have some training available to the CMC members. So instead of me misleading you and, and getting you lost in the application, maybe in the wilderness, um, I reached out to the Colorado Trail Explorer support team, Cotrex support team, and they have graciously volunteered to provide two modules of training. Tonight's the first night. And then next Thursday, we'll have a second module. Um, so that was really nice of them. And so they're available tonight and are gonna go through the first half of the program. And then next week, we'll do a follow on different presentation. And so I'd like to welcome our Colorado Trail Explorer um, support team member, Joe O'Brien. Um, he's with the Colorado Parks and Wildlife and he's got a broad base of outdoor experience from firefighter to trail crew leader to project manager. And the folks at Colorado uh, Trail Explorer have been super helpful um, on getting us up to speed and helping us with getting our BPX routes in there. So they are really good to reach out and help us. And so everybody I'd like to welcome Joe O'Brien. Thank you. Hi everyone. Uh, yeah, thanks so much, Randy, and thanks everybody on the call for taking the time out of your evening to learn a little bit about Cotrex. So um, a little bit about my role with Cotrex. I am currently operate as a product designer for Cotrex. So I um, design and kind of research and, and scope out the, the new features that Cotrex um, produces and develops. Um, so anything you see coming out of Cotrex in the coming months or that you saw came out of Cotrex last year, um, I probably uh, designed that. And I work with Alex Alma at the state uh, who 
is the project manager for Cotrex and, and really has been stewarding Cotrex through a number of years of uh, iterations of development. And we're really, really proud of it. We think it's a, an excellent app and we're really excited to, to share it with you all here today. So um, I have a, I'm gonna share my screen here for a, a short presentation that's gonna go over some of the high level features and then we're gonna dive into the application itself. Um, and we're gonna take a look at, um, uh, at some of those features and then leave time at the end to talk about how Cotrix connects to CMC trips and how you can use it uh, effectively for any kind of CMC trips that you might go on uh, over the summer. Um, so again about me, my background is in you know trails, uh, wilderness guiding, uh, wildland firefighting, um, volunteer project coordination. I, I worked uh, for Volunteer Shroud Door Colorado for a season when I moved out here to Colorado. Uh, and then worked in software for a number of years as a, a database and interface designer for nonprofits and government agencies. So working on Cotrex in this capacity is really a dream dream job for me. Um, so we're gonna be talking about what is Cotrex, the big major features, and then how to use it for CMC trips. And then there'll be plenty of time at the end for Q&A. So please do feel free to use that chat feature. If you have specific questions, I'll try to repeat them. If there's an opportunity while we're pausing in between slides or in between showing features, I'll be happy to um, show uh, something um, or answer a question there. Or if it makes more sense, I'll, I'll answer it at the end, but we'll have plenty of time there at the end. So a little bit about the history of Cotrex. The first trails app in the nation to include all trail users and every official trail uh, in the state. Um, so this was an effort that I think started around 2015 with the Colorado the Beautiful initiative. Um, and it was a major um, kind of data initiative related to um, trying to understand how uh, Colorado could put a trail within, I think it was a goal of 10 miles um, from, from every resident, I'm ensuring there was some kind of a trail or trail system within 10 miles of every resident. That started with a big cataloging effort of all of the trail alignments. So I think there were over 230 data contributors to Cotrex across the state from the federal level on down to, to cities and smaller municipalities. Um, and you'll find that across Cotrex, we have sourced data from the Forest Service, National Parks, um, BLM, um, you know, counties, cities, um, basically anywhere you can think of, we have probably pulled um, data from them. Uh, we are continuously updating that information as well. So as agencies build new trails or change alignments of trails, um, we're communicating with them and updating that information all the time. So um, we're really, really pride ourselves on trying to have a very comprehensive map. Um, now that doesn't necessarily mean that when you um, go out to a trail system that every trail you're going to see on the ground is going to be in Cotrex. And that's for two reasons. First reason is sometimes agencies have more trails on the ground than uh, they have the capacity to really map or that they've mapped yet. So, um, you know, this is especially challenging for some of the larger agencies like the Forest Service and the BLM who have tons and tons of trails that have been developed over many years and they may just not have it in a database or in a format where we can actually you know consume that information and display it on the map so that's reason number one um, the other primary reason um, is is that you may come across social trails or user created trails um, that are not official trails designated by an agency. So we pride ourselves on only showing official trails that if you were to go to that um, that land management agency that, that manages that trail in that area, that they would say, yep, that's a trail that we want to show to the public and that we want people to use. Um, and so there may be social trails that you come across um, that you wonder about, and, and that's because the agency um, doesn't really recognize that as an official trail. So those are a couple of reasons why you might not see 100% every line on the map in Cotrex represented in the real world. Um, but we are continuously updating those things, and we do love feedback from the public. So if you do come across those types of situations when you're out in the field and you're using Cotrex, send us a message. There's an ability to submit map, map feedback either through the mobile device or through desktop uh, for Cotrex. Um, and we are very responsive about that. We take those requests and we go to the official agency and we verify, you know, is this something where there's a gap in our, in our data? So Cotrex stands for Colorado Trail Explorer, as Randy said. 
some of the really high level important things about Cotrex, it has all activity types. So we have hiking, biking, equestrian, uh, dirtback riding, uh, four by fours, side by sides, as well as three winter activity types, snowshoeing, cross country skiing, and snowmobiling that you can toggle between. We have over 45,000 miles of official trail uh, across the state that are cataloged in Cotrex. It's 100% free, so that's for an account, for anything. We also have a, uh, anything that Cotrex offers is free. Um, and that's also true for management agencies. So last year we, we launched a, a set of features that allow management agencies to post official advisories and closures and notices uh, related to trails or, or open spaces. Um, and that's free to them as well. We, we see Cotrex as a public service for um, recreators as well as management agencies and volunteer organizations around the state. Um, and we wanna ensure that it stays that way. One of the really great things about Cotrex as well is that it's offline map capable. So um, unlike some services that ask you to pay for that as a premium feature, it's totally free to download those map blocks and use them offline. Um, and you can still do quite a lot with those offline map blocks uh, without needing any kind of cell service or, or Wi-Fi. Uh, and then finally, most of the features in Cotrex don't require an account. We don't ask you to sign up or give over any personal information. Even when you sign up for an account, you don't have to put a, give over personal information. I think we ask for an, an email address and, and your account name, and that's about it. Um, and so for most of the features in Cotrex, you don't need an account um, to use those things. You don't need an account to look at the map, uh, to measure things, uh, to, to look at closure notices and advisories or other assets on the map. The only time that you really um, need an account is if you plan on saving things, saving your, um, you know, saving a custom route that you wanna go on on a future trip, recording a trip and saving that information. Uh, and we'll go over some of those things here today. So I'm going to show us some of these features when we um, jump over to the app, but just to kind of um, continue to down this track. Um, so Cotrex is desktop and mobile capable. It's available on iOS as well as Android. Um, and there is a website, trails.colorado.gov, where you can use all the features there uh, that don't require any kind of an account. Um, as Randy said, the maps are really high quality. Um, that's what attracted to me to Cotrex. I, um, was a big fan before I actually worked uh, on Cotrex of the the quality, the, the quality consistency of the maps and how easy they were to read and, and use and manipulate. So it's updated really regularly by official sources with you know accurate alignments. Um, the appropriate use types is a really important thing for us. We're always trying to ensure that if you go to Cotrex and you say, oh, you know, I want to go for a mountain biking ride, that if you select that activity type, um, that you're going to be able to um, view those trails with confidence and know that you know if I go mountain biking on this trail, it's allowed and, and accepted by that agency. And we'll take a look at what that looks like um, here in a moment. Um, and then one of the areas that I, I mentioned before, um, uh, one of the areas I mentioned before um, is that closures and alerts piece. And that's something that's growing um, really rapidly, uh, especially right now, we're talking to a lot of agencies, but, um, and I'll show some of that functionality, but basically um, in addition to things like seasonal closures that are baked into the map for Cotrex, um, we also have the ability for um, agencies to post their own closure um, notices or advisory notices. And that could be related to a wildfire. It could be related to a public health situation like COVID that we saw last spring. Um, it could be related to uh, something as mundane as a, as a construction project or a maintenance project where you know, the, the agency wants to let you know that, you know, there'll be trail crews working in an area and maybe consider going somewhere else or, or you know, expect to potentially have delays because of that. Um, and then another thing we added last year was um, weather from weather.gov. So anytime you click on a trail uh, or a, a point on the map anywhere at all, um, you can get weather that is geographically specific to that area, zoomed in really close on weather.gov, and it'll show you the seven-day forecast, which um, I think any of us that recreate in the mountains know that the weather is really um, temperamental. Um, and you know you can only rely on a weather forecast so much in the mountains um, but what we try to do with our weather is be very specific about the areas that we're developing a forecast for um, so looking at 
you know, rather than saying, what's the weather going to be like in Breckenridge uh, this weekend, being able to say, what's the weather forecast for the specific, you know, mountain range that is 3,000 feet higher in elevation than Breckenridge that I'm actually going to be on, because that can be a drastically, drastically different picture, as I'm sure most of you all are, are aware. A um, couple of questions here from Terry that I think makes sense to answer now. Um, what does offline map capable mean in practical terms? Um, it means that you can, on the mobile device, if you um, download the mobile device and you have it on your phone, uh, when you have Wi-Fi coverage or cell coverage, you can download blocks of the map that will show the topographic details and the other um, things that are on the map, as well as the trail alignment details um, that are available when you're offline, when you don't have cell coverage or you're, no, you're not connected to Wi-Fi. So you can still use that to, to navigate um, when you're out in the backcountry and record your trip. So that's what um, that means. And, and that's interesting. I think your second question around maps being downloadable. Um, that's what that means. Uh, you can download those things on, um, on an Apple device or an Android device. And then last question, how frequently are specific uh, and specific are closures and alerts posted? Um, so it really depends on the agency. Um, some agencies have very um, aggressive ways in which they manage um, their trails. So for example, Boulder County um, opens and closes their trails very aggressively based off of uh, weather conditions. So if the ground is really saturated, they will shut down their trails for muddy conditions. Um, you know, they'll shut down their trails for muddy conditions on Monday at 8 a.m. and open them back up by, you know, Tuesday at 4 p.m. Um, they'll be very aggressive about opening and closing those trails to maintain the integrity of them because they get so much use and hiking or biking on a saturated trail like that causes really significant damage. And so they try to protect them in that way. So really depends on the area that you're looking at. Areas like the Forest Service land, um, you know, National Park land, um, some of those larger areas as well as counties that don't get quite the traffic of kind of the, the front range corridor area. Um, update things a lot less frequently. Um, and they, yeah, they, are, they update things a lot less frequently um, than, than those other areas. So it really depends. And there are a lot of agencies that we've yet to really onboard into this tool, um, but we're growing all the time. We were talking to um, Denver Mountain Parks today and Greeley, and you know, we, we usually talk to two or three agencies a week about um, getting onboarded with this tool and, and becoming regular contributors to those kind of official closure and alert notices. Um, so going on here in the major features, I'll show you this in just a moment, but we have this measure tool that's really cool, snaps to the, uh, the alignment to the trail and gives you really accurate measurement of the distance of the trail as well as elevation. Um, that's how you build out custom routes. Um, featured routes, which are curated by agencies themselves. So unlike other applications where if they suggest a promoted route to you, uh, it's because of popularity of that route or you know, the rating of the route, which are, you know, valuable pieces of information when you're deciding where to go. Um, featured routes and coat tracks are, are really agency promoted. So um, that local area, the, the rangers who know that area best um, may build out a featured route that is an interpretive hike or, you know, highlights a hidden gem kind of area that um, folks aren't quite as aware of or um, gives you details about an area from a historical or a cultural um, perspective. There's a number of different types of featured routes in there, as well as featured routes that are good for kids, that have waterfalls, all kinds of different ways that agencies kind of promote what they um, think are, are cool things to, to visit and take a look at. Um, and then finally, uh, these last three require, um, require an account uh, to use, but you can create your own custom routes that you can share with your friends and family if you're planning a trip. Um, you can record in the field and track your, your mileage and your elevation and your pace and um, other things like that. Um, and then you can like and save uh, trails or trailheads or parks uh, for later. So you can kind of keep a list of places that you might want to return to. And this is something that's going to be uh, key to, to how the CMC trips operate uh, because they've created a lot of custom routes and um, will give you the ability to, to like those routes um, and have them for, for offline use. And then I kind of touched on weather already. Um, a couple of other um, 
things that we have built out recently are the uh, trailhead and parking lot cameras. Those are on the rise. Most agencies don't yet have trailhead and parking lot cameras in, in abundance. Um, but, you know, for example, uh, Jefferson County properties have um, added a lot of uh, trailhead cameras, parking cameras in the Fort Collins and Larimer area. There's some agencies that have some um, parking lot cameras and you'll be able to see those on the map with a kind of little camera symbol um, that allows you to kind of take a look at the real time parking situation. So, <clears throat> excuse me, if you um, live near that area, uh, you can kind of check the trailhead before you leave the house to see if it's super crowded or not. And then finally, um, you can share quite a lot in Cotrex. So I'll show you how to do that um, as we dive into the tool. Um, but you can share specific GPS coordinates of an area in Cotrex as well as other things like a custom route or um, lots of different stuff you can share with with friends and other people. And we're developing new stuff all the time, so um, we're not quite ready to unveil some of those things here today. But um, we have a lot of a lot of development planned around easier ways to navigate in the in the field and and get a good sense of kind of your real time, um, you know, your real time movement across the land and and ways to navigate. So to find Cotrex. Search for Cotrex on the App Store, uh, either App Store there or go to trails.colorado.gov for the uh, browser version. Um, and you should be able to find it there and download it and, and be on your way. Um, so I'm going to pause for one quick second here while I switch over um, to demonstrate a few of these things. And I'm also taking a look at the comments here. Can we download waypoints or routes? in a form that could be used by a GPS. Yeah, so we allow you to, um, uh, to download a GPX file uh, for routes that you create. Uh, and you can do that with the CMC trips as well. If you prefer not to use Cotrex, CMC has um, put their trips in Cotrex um, as a trail alignment, as a, as a route in Cotrex, um, but you can download that as a GPX, GPX file um, and use it in another application if, uh, if you're more familiar with that application. And you can do that with some other things too, like um, recorded trips that you've had, you know, that you've made in the past, um, et cetera. Um, so I'm gonna show off a few of these features that I was talking about here, um, and then um, dive into kind of the, the process for um, ensuring that you can get a CMC trip on your phone. Um, in, a, in the future session and the one that we do next week, what we'll specifically dive into um, is uh, how to build your own custom routes. You know, the different tools you can use to kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, create custom routes um, yourself that you can use uh, when you're in the field or share with friends. Um, and we'll go over how all those tools work and you know, how to do some of the things that I'm showing you here today, but in a little more detail for a personal use rather than you know, simply downloading something for a CMC trip. So um, the first thing I wanna show up is this activity view. Um, up here in the top left corner, you can see the uh, activity type. If I hover over this on desktop, and I have this on mobile as well, it's on the right-hand corner of the screen, I can choose an activity type. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. I've had a, this is about my fourth presentation slash conversation today, so my voice is a little hoarse. So I can go through here and select an activity type. I'm going to choose hiking. You can see the base map doesn't really change. The trails are all still green. Um, you can see the roads in here. But if I switch to biking, for example, <clears throat> the base map is gonna change. <clears throat> you see a couple of things here. One, the trail grays out, which means that this is not an acceptable use type for this specific activity. So you're not allowed to bike on this section of trail here. It's not listed as an accepted use. You can also see that this one turned orange here. So if we look at this, we can click on this to learn more about it. What orange means um, when you're looking and you have a specific use type selected is essentially look a little further into this. Um, click on this trail if you're interested in it. 
because usually what it will mean um, is that there is a um, there is some kind of a uh, restriction to this issue, to this use type. There's some kind of an issue with this where um, you know usually it's a seasonal closure. So for like a wildlife uh, situation, like a you know a seasonal wildlife closure, you might see this where it would say you know um, the trail is closed from uh, you know April to June each year. Um, and sometimes, you know, in this case, it doesn't actually tell us the exact reason why this particular uh, use type uh, is orange here, um, which is pretty rare. Usually what it will show you, um, might be able to find another example here. Usually what it will show you is something like this, where we can see bikes are allowed from May 1st until November 30th, right? I have bikes selected here. And it's showing this as orange uh, for that reason. It's saying, you know, there's some kind of a restriction here that you need to kind of um, look into a little bit more. Um, so usually it will show you some kind of a date restriction like that if something is kind of seasonally closed for one reason or another. But in the event that we have something like we had happen over here where it doesn't really tell you what's going on, um, there are a couple of things that you can do. Um, you can click on the land manager link. The land manager link will take you to that agency's webpage for that general region. Um, so this is a BLM one. And again, it, it really depends on the agency and where we got the data. You know, BLM is a little bit less specific in most cases than, um, you know, like Jefferson County or areas that have more resources to, to put towards their trails um, and keeping track of these things. But generally those links will take you to that agency webpage or more specifically to um, a page specifically about that area. Um, so you can look at that and look for you know, restrictions or more information about that trail or that area, which is a nice way to kind of easily find the webpage. You know, I, I come from the background of trying to figure out where I wanna go on my next trip from 10 years ago, where I was filtering through forest service webpages all over the place. and you know, pulling information from a ton of different places just to figure out whether or not I could, you know, go for a hike with my dog. Um, and this kind of puts that information either directly in Cotrex or in these links so it's easy for you to find. So you'll usually have this manager link. You almost always have this manager link. And in a lot of places, you'll have a URL to that specific trail or trail system. So this URL um, is for this specific trail system here. Um, and if we open that up, it should tell us uh, more about this specific area, this specific trail system, and some of the restrictions or details or um, nice things about it here. Um, so those links are really handy. They're not, people don't usually use them very often, um, but they're very, very powerful um, if you're looking around at different areas, kind of clicking around, um, you know, looking at, uh, you know, Ridgeway State Park. That's you know, this trail is inside of this park that I just clicked on here. Um, the URL uh, goes to probably this specific trail uh, kind of description or a page on this specific trail uh, or trail system here. So that's a great way to um, confirm things if you're unsure about whether or not an activity type is allowed. Um, and it's also a great way to, to ensure that the area is not going to be closed down. Like I said, we're trying to make Cotrex this comprehensive place where um, you can go and, and see those authoritative closures um, and advisories, um, but we don't have full coverage of every single area. And so if there's a hesitation, let's say a wildfire came through that area earlier in the year, or let's say you know that they were closed earlier um, <clears throat> and you don't see it in Cotrex, or there was some kind of an incident that was nearby and you have some sense of, you know, I, I think this might be closed. I'm not seeing it on Cotrex. Checking on those links is a really good way to do it because if it's not um, in Cotrex, it'll be in those links there. So you'll be able to go through and, and look at other assets when you click on anything in Cotrex dogs, you know, if it allows dogs, if they're leashed, unleashed, um, other things like that. The surface type of the trail as well is listed here. So if that's important to you, uh, I know certain activity types, it's really important. Um, that's a good way to take a look at that uh, and view that. Um, 
just checking some questions here. Um, so this is a good way to get kind of those specific details. Another thing that I want to kind of point out here is that weather piece. So I can click just anywhere on the map and view the seven day forecast. Click on that link and it'll take me to that seven day forecast. And we can see that on the map here, this is right in that area. That trail segment's like right in here. It's very specific to this area that that forecast is coming from. It's not coming from the next town over or anything like that. It's coming from that specific area. So that could be valuable for folks um, in kind of planning a, a trip in that way. You can also copy and share these coordinates. I can just click this and it copies them to my clipboard if I'm on desktop. If I'm on mobile, um, it will um, you know, open it up as kind of that share dialogue where you can text them or email or put it in another application if you want to, um, or just copy it to your clipboard to, to do whatever you like with it. Um, you can also submit Mac feedback. So this is really important as well for us. This is what I was talking about. If you find something where you say, you know what, I'm at the trail, uh, you know, I'm at this spruce trail here, and it says on Cotrex that I can't mountain bike here, but there's a trail sign, you know, at the trailhead that says mountain biking is allowed. That's a per perfect opportunity to use that submit map feedback, because uh, we take that, go right to the land manager and say, hey, I think we've got a, you know, an error in our data. Uh, and that often prompts that agency to update their data as well, because we pull it directly from them. So they may have a something that's um, incorrectly labeled in their database or in their own internal GIS maps that they use that um, members of the public can help um, maintain and clean that data. So I know we get those kinds of submissions all the time from members of the public that, um, I mean, not all the time, but you know, pretty frequently we get um, folks commenting and giving us something like that or saying, you know, this isn't the true trail alignment, it goes uh, a different direction. Um, so I'm going to read through some of these questions here to take a pause um, before jumping into uh, how we can um, download a CMC trip. Um, we'll we'll take a look at how we can download a CMC trip, uh, and then I will um, show you on the mobile device uh, some of those same features and things you can do with it, um, as well as how you can get those download downloadable map blocks. Um, So is there a specific type of topographic map that Cotrex is based on? Um, there is, uh, it's an open street map uh, is one of the contributors. There are a couple of different map contributors, um, but Natural Atlas, you can see kind of down here in the bottom menu um, where some of those contributors are, as well as a legend and our support um, portal and terms and privacy and other things, but um, roads and uh, kind of city and street stuff come from OpenStreetMap. Um, the trails themselves come from CPW, from, from the effort that was done to collect all that information. And then other things like assets on the map, as well as the actual topographic lines and um, the really beautiful maps come from Natural Atlas. And they're our um, partner who who develop and maintain Cotrex. So um, they're a private company that has a natural atlas, which is a fantastic application uh, that works outside of Colorado um, that has really, really beautiful maps. They pride themselves on having really beautiful maps. And one of the reasons that we um, went with them um, as the contractor there. Um, can I create a waypoint and download, download that to a GPX file? Yeah, you can do that. You can download a decent amount to, to GPX files and use them in other applications. There are some areas that you might not, uh, I don't mean geographic areas, but there are some features that um, don't have GPX. I don't have a, a good sense right off the top of my head uh, that don't allow you to download a GPX file or upload a GPX file, but we're continuously looking at those areas. So if you come across an area where you say, you know, I've did X um, and uh, I wasn't able to download the GPX file, um, we can um, look at adding that as a, as a piece of functionality. Um, does Cotrex show where you are on the trail? Yes, it does. I'll show you that in the mobile version. Uh, how do you find the weather? Um, so to, to find the weather, all you're going to do is click on a spot or a trail 
and then scroll down. Sometimes it's it's usually near the bottom. So on a trail like this, there's a lot of information. There's all these different listings and types. Um, and then there's view seven day forecast on weather.gov. And that's where you're gonna be able to find that. Um, yeah, a couple of people asking about that weather button. If you're clicking on a trail or an asset, it's gonna be, um, down near the bottom. Uh, in my example, where I just I just kind of clicked on a, a random spot that doesn't have anything, you know, it's easy to find. Um, but if, for example, if I click on this trail here, um, it doesn't show up right away. I've got to gotta scroll down to the bottom here below other places in this weather section. Okay, so I'm gonna jump over to um, uh, how we're going to uh, set up a CMC, uh, get you set up to be able to download a CMC trip and look at it on mobile. And I apologize, my headphones just beeped at me that they, they might die here in five or ten minutes, so I'll have to jump over to um, my laptop microphone. Um, but I'll try to do that seamlessly so it doesn't disrupt this here. Um, so what we're going to do for a CMC trip is uh, look at uh, this trip here, uh, BPX Backpack Five Pass Loop Tour of the Horns. This is what we're going to use as an example. Um, and they're going to have an itinerary here. And then a, a link to Cotrex. I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to paste it. And I'm going to do this on desktop. Personally, this is how I use Cotrex. If I'm planning a trip, I go on desktop. I like the big open map. I like to be able to you know, move around and manipulate things. It's a little bit hard on the smaller screen to, you know, plan some kind of an expedition. Um, it's a lot easier to do it on desktop, but we can do all this um, on mobile as well. Um, so I open that link and here's here's this trip. You know, it's by CMC BPX here. I can see the description. Um, I can see the elevation profile, the ascent that we're going to do, the total length. Now, this is just day one of this trip. Um, I can get here. So I can click this and it'll open uh, Google Maps and I'll be able to get turn-by-turn uh, -turn directions right to this, this point. Um, I mean, depending on whether or not it's you know, accessible by, by vehicle or not, uh, some of these probably won't be accessible by vehicle, but in general, it'll take you to the trailhead for, for a trail segment or a route that you've created. Um, I can like this, this is gonna be important for us, and then I can download the GPX. This is where I can download that GPX file and put it in some other application if I don't want to use Cotrex. I don't need an account to do this. Um, I can just come on and do that. If I don't want to create a Cotrex account, I don't need to. We'd love to have you as a user, but you know, people have their own preferences and things they're comfortable with. And the most important thing when you're in the back country is that you're comfortable with the tools and technology that you have. Um, so we can look at the elevation. On this elevation profile, you can kind of hover over it as you see me doing on the left-hand side, this little plus icon that I have here. You can see how it's uh, changing uh, the, the target icon on the actual map. So that's corresponding the elevation with the actual trail alignment. So you can kind of look at where this is gonna be the, the high point of this trail uh, for this day, uh, right here about 2.9 miles in. Um, you're going to be at about 12,400 feet. Um, you can also see a couple other visualization points here. The trees, or I mean the green line above this pink line on the left-hand side, um, that's an indication of tree cover. Now, that's not necessarily based off of satellite imagery or somebody going out and noting every tree in the forest. Uh, it's an estimation based off of, you know, the elevation and the slope and um, everything else, the you know, region of the country. Uh, it does an estimation on what you could probably expect, um, but it gives you some rough approximation of the tree cover for the area that you're going to be in, uh, which is important when you're way up at elevation. And then the yellow areas that you see, the yellow bars uh, below that elevation profile um, show the percentage grade. Um, they, uh, I mean, it always shows a percentage grade um, down in the bottom corner there. Um, but it shows the um, anything that's over a 15% grade is going to be shown in yellow. So you have some kind of a sense of the severity of the slope that you're going to be uh, on as you're, you know, on going on this trip. So again, we can get the weather forecast here. So how do we take this 
uh, link. How do we take the other links for this uh, description? You know, this has a number of different days here, three day trip here um, that that you're going to be going on. Um, so how do we take these links and make sure that I can open Cotrex up when I'm out there at the actual trail and see it on the map and be able to use it? Uh, and the way that we're going to do that is if we're on desktop or if we're on mobile, we're going to hit the like button. It's going to give you this little check mark. That means that um, this is going to show up in your list of uh, kind of liked hikes and activities. You can like a bunch of stuff in Cotrex, but for this purpose, we're liking this, so it'll show up in that list for us. So that's all I need to do on desktop. I'm done. I could go through, what I would do is I would go through and I would open these other two links and I'd do the same thing. I just open them up, take a look at them for a second and then like them. Make sure I have all three of these liked for this particular um, three day trip. And then I'm gonna jump over uh, to mobile so I can show you all um, what that looks like as far as uh, downloading that trip um, and making sure you have the underlying map block. So give me one second while I, um, turn this piece of technology on here. Okay, so I am opening up Cotrex here. I'm gonna close out of Cotrex and then start it back up again, um, just so you get the full experience. Sorry for any screen delay that's between, um, you know, I'm casting this from my phone to my laptop right now, so you get a little delay sometimes. I'm gonna take this opportunity while that's loading to take a look at the chat, see if I can answer any questions. Um, how do I find the CMC trails, Bob asks. Um, that's a great question. Um, CMC should provide uh, documents like the one that I showed here. Uh, CMC should provide uh, this document that has those specific links. You're not going to be able to probably find them on Cotrex. They're not really publicly listed. They're listed specifically for these trips. So you're going to need to go through the CMC uh, kind of trip description page to find those, those particular uh, trips. Um, is there info on trailhead access slash snow? Catherine asks. Um, there is some information in Cotrex on, you know, snow-based activities and groomed trails. Uh, there is not information on the status of a particular trail on any particular day, whether it's snowy or icy or muddy or those kinds of trail conditions. That is something that we are actively working on trying to add, um, and there are a number of ways that we might do that. Um, but right now, you can't do that. Right now, it's authoritative information from those agencies, and we don't really do um, crowdsourced information or information from the general public that you see in a lot of other apps where people leave reviews and reports and things like that. Um, uh, but we're looking at ways that we can do that um, in the future. So it's a great question. Um, someone asks about, can you see avalanche risk on the trails? You can't see avalanche risk um, on the trails. Um, we don't have anything really related to avalanches specifically. We were talking to the Colorado Search and Rescue the other uh, week about you know ways that we can increase the, the messaging and the information about safety. Uh, in the mountains, both in summer and winter, um, but there's nothing that specifically talks about avalanche risk uh, in Cotrex currently. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do here, I've pulled open Cotrex um, uh, on my mobile device, um, and I am going to um, pull up that liked trip. So I'm going to go to my profile, and that's this bottom um, icon here, the left second to the right icon here um, with the little notification symbol on it. I'm going to tap on that. And you have to have an account to do this. You can't like anything if you don't have an account. So uh, if you try to like something, it's going to ask you to sign up for an account. Uh, so you need to do that if you're going to save these things. So this is my profile. This is where I have my field notes, recorded trips, things that I've liked, uh, custom routes, other stuff like that. What I'm gonna do before I do this, I always do this just to make sure I'm a little obsessive about this, is I'll hit the sync button. It's right below view receptivity. And when I have service, it's gonna sync everything that I've done on desktop 
to my mobile device. So it's going to make sure that if I'd like something on desktop, um, that's reflected in the mobile app. Sometimes the mobile app to kind of prevent from you know, eating up all your data or all your battery, it's not going to sync every single second and keep pinging the system and checking to see if you've done something. Um, it does it pretty regularly. I, you know, unless you go out of cell coverage, um, it does it pretty regularly. But if you're kind of jumping very quickly, like we are saying, okay, I just like this on desktop two minutes ago. Now I'm going to come to the mobile app. It's good to kind of sync, sync things before you go in and look. So I'm going to go to my likes. It's this third one down here. Karen asks, do you have a different version? My mobile iPhone Cotrex app does not show upload photos as your screen does. That's because um, you don't have a different version. Um, that's just because I took some photos when I was out on a trip and I haven't uploaded them to Cotrex. They're still stored on my phone. So that's just based off of me taking a trip and, and not having you know synced and uploaded those photos and, and sent those. It asks you to do that. Um, but no, you don't have a different version. So I can see here at the very top of the list, there's the five pass loop. Tour of the Horns, uh, day one. So there's my liked route. Um, now this is all well and good when I have service. I can pull this up and here's my trip. I can kind of pull this card down. Here it is on mobile. I can zoom in, look at those details. I can come down and see the ascent and the link. There's the weather button there. If I want to get that, there's the elevation profile um, and all the details, right? Again, I can download this as a GPX file. Uh, if I want to do that, and I can also share it with other people if I want to do that. But what we want to make sure is that we have this map available to us when we're offline. So anytime you look at a trailing code tracks or a custom route, which is what this is, um, a trip that someone has created, um, you'll have this offline button. If you tap this offline button, it's going to ask you if you want to download the topo block or the satellite block uh, or both. I'm just download the topo blocks personally. I don't use the satellite ones, but you can download either one depending on your device and the storage space that you have. I'm gonna tap on that and it's gonna start downloading. You can see it 1%, 2%, 3, 4. I can close this and I can go do other stuff in Cotrex. So, you know, I can go to the other, uh, the other loop, um, you know, day two here. And I can come in here and I could tap on that one if it was in a different map block. Now you'll notice it's still going up that's because this is in the same map block. So it's just downloading that background map block uh, for me right now um, and downloading the route and everything else here. So as long as this is kind of continuing to download, I'm all set. Uh, when it finishes, it'll give me a little check mark um, and I'll know that, that that map block is downloaded. And when that map block is downloaded and you have this route liked, um, you'll be able to pull up the route um, just like we see here. I'll be able to pull up this route and see the alignment here and see the details about it. And I'll be able to see all this topographic information around it. You know, So if something happens and you have to take a different line back, you have to go back a different way than you were planning, you'll still have the, the trails uh, available to you uh, to look at things. And I can do things like measure those trails and look at the elevation and kind of make a decision when I'm in the field. Personally, I do that all the time uh, where I will kind of you know, get to a junction and say, okay, well, it's four miles this way, it's two miles back to the parking lot this way, but the two miles back to the parking lot is a 2,000 foot elevation gain because I just measured it out in Cotrex. I'm going to take the four mile or, you know, vice versa, I'm going to take the, the two mile and get it over with. Um, so I'm going to have that uh, map block downloaded and ready to go. The other place that you can go uh, to look at your uh, map blocks here is in this download button. So what I just did there uh, for everybody, if you missed that was in the bottom right, that little down arrow with the line, that's the download uh, section of Cotrex, the offline manager. That shows you all the map blocks that you currently have downloaded. Um, so I can, I see I have 18 topo blocks downloaded and zero satellite blocks. And I have a bunch of featured routes that are listed and downloaded. Um, if I tap on that topo, it's gonna zoom out. And I can see all the blocks. You can see the whole state of Colorado is split into these um, blocks here. And that's how this works. And so I can come in here and download blocks as well. I could say, you know, I want, I want to do these. I'm just tapping on these. 
turns them yellow like this to indicate that they're in the process of downloading right now. So I'm downloading multiple blocks this way. I can also kind of delete them in the same way. I could tap on this one here by Crested Butte um, and delete it. And it'll get rid of that one. So that's how I can always confirm. And one thing that I always suggest to people um, is if you are going out in the field, um, you know, always have a backup. I always take a, if I'm doing anything that is um, in any way outside of a simple day hike in a really populated area, um, I will get a, a paper map and a compass and know how to use it. Um, I rely on a paper map and a compass and my own ability to, to read a map. When I'm out on a two day, three day, multi-day backpacking trip, um, or if I'm in an unfamiliar area or an area where I know there aren't a lot of people, um, I want that redundancy in case I run out of battery or you know, drop my phone in a lake or whatever the case is. I don't want to rely on this one piece of technology um, to navigate myself successfully. Um, but one thing that you can do in Cotrex, if you are planning on using it as that navigation point, is ensure that where you're going is not right on the line of one of these blocks. So for example, if I, uh, I don't see trail alignment in this particular view, but let's say I was doing something here south of Crested Butte around where that division is. I wanna make sure that I have both of those map blocks downloaded in case I get out there and the trail I wanna to go to is closed and I don't have cell service or it's busy or for whatever reason, I just decide, you know, I'm gonna go, you know, I'm gonna go 20 minutes south um, and try something out because somebody told me at, uh, you know, at the sandwich shop I was at that there's this awesome hike and I wanna try it out. If you don't have that downloaded, you know, you're, you're gonna have the map for the, for one area, but not the other area. So I always go in and make sure um, that I have those areas that are, um, you know, anywhere where I'm gonna be near one of those dividing lines, I make sure just in case I have the other block so that I have a, a good quality map there. Um, so, okay, I know we only have a few minutes left here. So the last thing I'm gonna do, I'm letting those map blocks kind of download in the background. The last thing that I'm gonna do with this, just as a double, triple check to make sure that everything is um, set up properly, is I'm going to um, close Cotrex, go into airplane mode, and then open Cotrex up again and see if I can still see that, that information. Because um, it's all well and good for the for Cotrex to tell me, um, you know, uh, the it's synced and you have everything saved and the map block is there, and it has never failed me. But again, as somebody who's a little bit compulsive about making sure that I'm prepared, um, I always ensure um, that everything that downloaded downloaded as I as I wanted it to. Now um, I can't show you this in real time here because I'm connected to Wi-Fi in order to um, screen share this way. Um, but what I would do is go into airplane mode there when I was on my home screen, open Cotrex back up again, and then go into my liked area again, into this bottom left um, profile area, and go to my likes and open this up and make sure that when I know that I don't have cell service and I'm in airplane mode and I'm not connected to Wi-Fi, that this is what it looks like, that I can still see the trail alignment, that I can browse around different areas of the map and I see everything here. If that's how it displays to you, you know you're in good shape. You have this offline, you're all set. We also see the little check mark next to on, offline, which tells us that we're in good shape um, and you should be all good from there. So. Um, so yeah, that's how you would go about, um, you know, liking something from a CMC trip, going onto mobile, downloading the underlying map block, downloading the, the root uh, alignment itself and the details, uh, and then double checking that you have everything you need uh, for when you're out in the field. So um, I know we only have about five minutes left here. We've got a couple of questions in the chat, but I also want to open it up to uh, to Randy or other folks to, to potentially jump in and um, help out with, uh, any questions that came up from that that you think would be helpful for the group as as I'm kind of looking through the uh, the chat here for for other questions? Yeah, so Joe, I think you've actually covered most of the questions. There's a couple that you missed maybe that uh, I think are important. Uh, one from Karen, how do you search and find, for example, a trail by name? 
Yeah, so if you know the specific name of a trail, you can type it in um, and see if Cotrex um, comes up with, uh, with that. Um, admittedly, Cotrex's ability to find the specific name of a trail um, is a little bit hit or miss. So it can be a little bit difficult to find, you know, I know the exact name of this trail and I'm going to type it in exactly. Um, partly because, you know, again, the, the data is not always consistent in what agencies provide as far as the exact name of a trail. And there are different terms that people use for different trails. I was just on a webinar last week where um, people said, wait, that's not the name of the trail. We all call it something totally different um, uh, among our community. And so that, that can be a little bit hit or miss when it comes to searching for an exact trail. Um, generally, what I do when I'm browsing and, and looking for a specific area, if I can't get, you know, if somebody says to me, hey, I went on this great hike, say, can you send it to me in Cotrex? Because you can link anything in Cotrex. I can take um, you know, for example, I could click on this um, Wetterhorn Peak, and the the URL for Cotrex is for that specific point or for that specific trail segment. And so, if I share that with someone, if I copy and paste this and send it to somebody in an email or in a text, and they click on it, they don't need Cotrex to open it up. It'll open up on their browser, on their phone, or on their on their computer. Um, but that's an easy way to share. Um, if somebody's referencing a very specific trail, um, like this Wetterhorn Peak Trail, you know, the, the trail, the link, the URL is Wetterhorn Peak, you know, 12, 11, 2, that's specific for this little segment. Um, so it's pretty easy to share and do things like that. But searching for the name of a trail can be uh, sometimes pretty challenging just because of the, you know, the limitations of, of the data that um, agencies give us, as well as, um, you know, different names that that regions or areas have for trails. That being said, you know, I'm working right now on some designs to improve the search and filtering ability to make it easier to, to find the right kind of thing that you're looking for. So hopefully that's something that we introduce in the, you know, the coming months, uh, hopefully this year, some improvements to the ability to find specific things like that. Okay. And did you show how to use the search dialog box to just type in something and it takes you on the map to where it is? Yeah, so you can use this uh, search dialog box up here, explore routes and more. Um, the best way to use this in my personal experience is to search for a particular area. You know, you could search for a county. I could say like Summit, Summit County. Um, and it'll give me some, some options here. It'll give me Summit County, for example, kind of center it on the area. Um, or I could uh, search for a specific peak or something like that, um, and it'll usually come up. So, you know, physical locations are are usually pretty reliable on the map. Um, specific trail segments or trail names are a little bit more hit or miss. Um, and then things like, um, you know, it gives you these search suggestions like alpine hikes near Denver. Um, I generally advise people to to stay away from that type of searching because the system is just Uh oh. Can you all hear me? Yes. Um, so let's see. Um, covered searching pretty good, I think. Um, one other question about can you see where you are on the map and on a trail even when you're offline? Okay, I sorry, I my uh, audio was muted. I think you could hear me before I could hear you. Could you repeat that? Okay, so I think you covered searching. The, another question is, can you see where you are on the map and on your route, even offline? Yes, absolutely. So I didn't show this on the mobile device, um, but um, you can anytime you open up Cotrex on the mobile device um, and you tap on that um, uh, little target icon in the top left. Um, that will center the map on your current location as long as you allow Cotrex to see your GPS location, you have GPS on. So yeah, if you have that downloaded map block or a, you know, a route uh, and you're on that route, you can open up Cotrex and look at exactly where you are on that route. <clears throat> and that's generally speaking, very, very accurate. Um, now, you know, anytime with GPS, things become less accurate with cloud cover or really dense trees overhead or you know, other things like that, you know, satellites not being in the right place at the right time. 
Um, but in general, it, it's very, very accurate on, on where you are on the trail. Um, and there's also a little directional cone um, that's fairly accurate as well for kind of turning your phone and being able to kind of see like, where are you currently and orient yourself in that way as well. Okay, great. Um, and then a good question about how do you print maps with your route shown on it? Sure, so if you were to print a map with the route shown on it, um, you know, it can depend on the device that you're on. I would recommend, of course, doing that from desktop um, and use the, you know, use the browser print function. Um, that's what I do in saving something as like a PDF um, or potentially printing something um, is, is using that. And you should be able to do that when you have that route pulled up and it'll essentially just print the web page as it's sitting. So you can kind of, you know, customize and configure things and say, okay, this is what I want to show. And um, you can, anytime you have these expanded boxes on the left, um, you can collapse them just by clicking on them. So they get a lot smaller. So if you don't want the details here in your printed version, you want to try to get the biggest map possible, you can kind of close that there. And we can imagine that we had a, you know, a custom route that has a, a bolded line here along this Willow Lakes trail. Um, so you could do that centering and then just use the whatever browser you use uh, to print the map that way. Cotrex doesn't have a print feature within uh, within the tool. But you just use the normal browser one so you can print a yeah. hard copy. Okay. And it generally works. I, I have heard a couple of reports in the last month or so that folks have had issues with that because of uh, you know, an update to Chrome. So that's something we don't have control of when it comes to using a, a browser. Um, but... Uh, there are sometimes things that we can do to, you know, update our technology to accommodate some change that, you know, Google or, you know, Windows or some other provider made to make sure that those work a little bit better. So, you know, feel free to send us feedback if you have an issue with that. Okay. And I think I saved the best question for last. Is there a help function and where do you find it? Um, is there a help function? Uh, could you expand on that a little bit, what you mean by help? Uh, well, how do you find additional guidance and help and some tips? Okay. Yeah, because um, yeah, I had search and rescue on my brain. We were talking about. No, no, no yeah, not, not help. <laughs> just help with the software, the application. Yeah, I don't think it meant, uh, yeah, sending out. Yeah. Uh, so in think. the, <laughs> on desktop, um, you can see down here on my screen, you should be able to see this help link next to legend. That will take you to our support portal that we launched last year that has some articles on how to do some common things like record a trip or create a custom route or download a GPX file, um, different things like that. Uh, that's where I would say go first and you can kind of search through that. If I click on it, it'll open up our portal here and I can kind of um, search for you know, record uh, and it'll go over recording trips or editing a trip a trip or recording a field note when I'm out, different options. Um, so you can go there. And then if you still don't um, find an answer to your question through that, you can always email us at cotrex at state.co.us. I'll put that in the chat here for everybody. Um, Absolutely. And I can talk from experience. You guys are very quick to respond and actually work with us. And, and I learned a lot getting that uh, through the helpline. The support yeah, myself and Very Alex, good. thank you. Alex and I both monitor that as well as the developers who manage uh, the data and, um, and the technology. So uh, we jump on things really quickly. We're checking that every day and responding to questions from folks um, and trying to help out. Yep, I think it's a great program. And I think everybody, if you just get on it and try it out, it's really pretty simple to use. Um, appreciate your, uh, going through that tonight and we'll look forward to uh, next week when you get into a little bit more detail about how to create your own routes and maybe do some things on, on tracking and that. So yeah. um, yes, thank you very much, Joe. That was great. We had over a hundred people. Um, so I think that was a huge win and I think uh, everybody will look forward to using it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you all so much again for the time and um, the last thing that I will say about Cotrix is we are really open to feedback. It's Alex Alma and I, um, you know, coming up with ideas and developing things and supporting stuff. Um, and, you know, we take input from folks all the time where they say, you know, what would be really cool is, you know, X, Y, Z. 
And if it's something we haven't heard before and we can do it, we'll, we'll try to build it in. Uh, we always try to balance stuff that is really useful for the majority of the public. We're also making sure that we can, you know, serve some of the power users, some of you all probably on the, on the call who really understand maps and topography and um, want to use more advanced tools. And so we're, we try to be very, very receptive to that and, and build things based off of what, what people out in the field are actually need and what's valuable to them. So please feel free to send us an email either with a question about how to do something, or if you have an idea for a way that we can improve things, we're happy to consider it and it might make it into one of our, one of our future updates. Okay, well, thank you so much. And you got a lot of virtual applause there on the chat box. So thank you very much. And as a reminder, everybody, this was recorded. So it will be available in a day or two with a link. Okay. Uh, thanks again, Joe. Really appreciate it. And we'll look forward to next week's presentation as well. Thank you. Yeah, I'll see you next week. Thank you.